Do you like to give people presents? Hey everyone, welcome to Breakfast at Tracy's. Today is our final day in the first stretch of our Wise Investment series. These first two weeks have just been about general money practices that God's Word brings to our attention. We want you to be able to say at the end of your life that you were good managers of the resources God entrusted to you, and we hope that you are finding these breakfasts tremendously uh, filling. When I was first married, I made sure that every occasion had a present. Christmas, birthday, anniversary, Valentine's Day, and eventually Mother's Day. It seemed honestly that I'd no sooner have strained my brain trying to come up with a present that it was time to start thinking of the next one. I'll be honest, I found it all exhausting and stressful. But there was something I didn't know the whole time. My wife Jennifer felt the same way about doing the same for me. After years of stressing, trying to be good spouses to each other, doing what it seemed our culture expected of us, doing what we thought the other wanted, one of us finally finally sheepishly admitted how we didn't like getting nor giving what we referred to as obligatory presents, meaning presents that we were obliged to give because of a date on the calendar. The other agreed. We were both so relieved. Since then, we only give gifts spontaneously when we see something that we know will please the other person. No longer do we give out of obligation. We give out of love, at least in a way that fits both of us. This is the way followers of Jesus are to give, and while we touched on this yesterday, there is a very personal element to this type of giving. In Paul's letter to the Philippians, he is thanking them for their generosity toward him and says, At the moment I have all I need and more. I am generously supplied with the gifts you sent me with Epaphroditus. They are a sweet-smelling sacrifice that is acceptable and pleasing to God. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Just as my wife takes so much more delight in gifts that are given simply out of love, simply to please her, so God delights in gifts that are made in his name to others, which are given not because they have to be, but because they're aimed at pleasing him. Notice it says these gifts please God, not appease God. Many people donate money to appease God so that they will have their prayers answered or that, that, that God will give them more money in return or forgive them for some sin. That is religion. That's simply giving in order to control God to manipulate him into doing what we want. But pleasing God is when someone gives just for God's sheer delight, because that is reward in itself. After all, you know, you really love someone when your only delight is in seeing their delight. Your joy is found in giving them joy. This is the kind of giving that God wants us to make. Not where we are told to give, but when we give because we want to bring a smile to God. We want to show our appreciation to him. We want to make his day, so to speak. Paul is reminding the Philippians that their generosity is not just practical in its results, like supporting foreign workers or feeding the poor, but it is also emotional. Your gift giving in love has a sweet scent to God, and it pleases him. He delights in it. It brings him joy. The cross of Christ has already appeased God, but when you love God, you live to please him. That's just what love does. Let's pray. Our Father, thank you for the privilege of making your day at times. May we live lives of generosity not to appease you, but only to to please you. You are our friend, our parent, our companion, and our true spouse. You are the only one we need, and may you continue to
to take great delight in our generosity towards the things you care about. Amen. All right, to end our week, Breakfast Club, here is your question. Are you giving to appease God or to please Him? Next week, we will start with money challenges as part of a three-week component. And we're going to be looking at some good ones. So I hope that you join us then. Have a great weekend, Breakfast Club. We'll see you on Monday.